Do you want 10 minutes? I've got 10 minutes. Okay, p the people that are yielding, we got a one, one two, two, three. Yes. All right. Okay. Ready, Maggie? Ready? Go. Oh. <laughs> All right. He's got his own timer. <laughs> it's the one year anniversary of the uh, first um, uh, kind of conversation whatsoever regarding um, the effect of um, the African American vote as it pertains to district elections. This is the article that came out uh, last year, and as soon as it did, I was uh, suspicious that this might be just another common excuse to keep uh, Asheville in its uh, at-large districts because I'd heard quite a lot of excuses over the years. Oh, man, this video didn't uh, load. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. What do we got here? Oh, oh, it didn't work. So anyway, that's Cecil Bothwell from the 2013 League of Women Voters. Um, uh, oh, no, what's uh -oh. happening? Oh, no. Oh, it just started doing the whole... Okay. Oh, that's a horrible... Pardon me. I'm still learning PowerPoint here. All right, so um, anyway... I've heard uh, plenty of excuses uh, uh, over the years. I ran for city council in 2013. I've heard that the, uh, the city wasn't the, uh, large enough to have districts. That's not true. I've heard that the uh, city is homogenous, and that's not true. And uh, Cecil Bothwell actually said, well, uh, um, districts in Chicago have 50,000 people, so if we had districts here, we'd have one and a half districts, as though a district is a, a basic unit of measurement. Um, this is the map that was uh, shown in Joel Burgess's article, and this is the district map, okay? This is the new one. So the two, the six uh, uh, most populous African-American uh, precincts that Joel uh, mentioned in the article as being broken up into, uh, into all the different districts, really you see are two um, major areas of town, and you have the top four uh, point, uh, you got two, one, 11, and 10 being in central uh, Asheville, and then most of 8.3 and 8.2 in south Asheville. And if you take the data from that map and you put it with this map, what you will see is this is the concentration level of African Americans as an approximation. I can explain that later if you have a question about that. Um, in the 2017 uh, voter registration data, the background of this is shaded to the same level of African Americans um, registered to vote citywide, which was 11.14% that year. And in West Asheville, you have 6.77%, 21.12% in Central Asheville, 4.08 in North Asheville, 9.1 in East Asheville, and in South Asheville, it is 13, almost 0.6. And so we have two districts that have been created that have a higher percentage of African American votes than the city at large. And it would have been nice if this kind of data were available before any kind of referendum because we never had any conversation whatsoever about how this started. But as a lot of people understand uh, this uh, these days, this was all because of uh, Republican aggression against uh, Asheville. And this is Chuck Edwards, who sponsored the bill. This is Terry Van Dyne, who authored the even year amendment at the request of the mayor, which has also not been um, talked about in the press. I know a lot of voters think that their, vote, uh, their voices aren't being heard, but I have a feeling that the voters aren't being told the right information uh, over the uh, course of the years. And then Terry Van Dyne was um, abused and bullied in the press again, being shown as a, a tool of the uh, North Carolina uh, uh, GOP, the Republicans, uh, attacking us. Again, I'm just going to, without too much snark, show you the tw uh, traitorous 12 Democratic senators who voted aye on Senate Bill 813, passed with a unanimous vote in the Senate. And these are the traitor turncoat senators who voted to do this. Terry Van Dyne, Mike Woodard, Jeff Jackson, Jay Chaudhry, Dan Blue, Gladys Robinson, Floyd McKissick Jr., Ben Clark, Don Davis, Joyce Waddell, Paul Lowe Jr., Milton Toby Fitch Jr. These are the uh, Republicans. Keith Young said the General Assembly has made sure these maps are so splintered the, American, uh, the African American voting bloc will be completely wiped out. <laughs> completely wiped out. And then uh, Ms. Smith said, it's obvious from the way these district maps are surgically drawn, it will dilute the black vote especially, but there has been no evidence, you know, I haven't seen any data for anybody to uh, prove such a thing. Now, 
This is uh, Burton Street. Most of us uh, commonly understand Burton Street to be in West Asheville, but the Burton Street neighborhood is included in the Central District. So this uh, dwindling African-American community that has been threatened, that probably would have been protected had we had districts all along in the first place, bringing hyper-local attention to the needs of the community, this is in Central. Uh, our central district. This is Burton Street. It's in District uh, 2. And so the African American voters there are joining a, uh, a, a um, population that is 21.21%, twice that of the average. And then, of course, uh, Terry Van Dyne. I think somebody mentioned uh, classism. Uh, David Forbes went off on her plenty of times in a bunch of writings well off basically status quo politician who is easily outmaneuvered and uh, won't put up much of a fight. It's odd that uh, 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 Terry Van Dyne is being uh, labeled as status quo when she's actually changing the election system. And Asheville State Senator is an extremely wealthy white person who lives outside Asheville in the ultra-wished enclave of Biltmore Forest. And Terry Van Dyne had shown a propensity for betrayal and political incompetence. And Terry Van Dyne agreed to support the gerrymandering plan. The new districts are bluntly a racial gerrymander, uh, uh, Terry Van Dyne backed it anyway. And of course, Shanika Smith is a contributing writer to David Forbes, who is her managing editor at the Asheville Blade. The plan's blatantly civil rights violation is likely headed to court one way or the other, because as we know, somebody could sue over this. A common citizen could take a uh, suit over this, like um, myself, if I wanted to. On um, <clears throat> this is the at-large voting frequently asked questions document produced by the NAACP Legal Defense Fund on what is at-large uh, voting, why is at-large voting discriminatory, how does at-large voting affect community of color, uh, how are single member districts created. Single me uh, member districts have been a hallmark tool of the civil rights movement to gain access of minority populations at the grassroots level of the political uh, process, and we missed the boat on it. Somebody said that we're not Alabama in, in uh, 1964. Uh, apparently we are. On November 4th, 2013, the National uh, Association of Colored People Legal Defense Fund wrote a letter to the uh, mayor and city council of Beaufort, South Carolina, threatening legal action if they did not dismantle their at-large system and institute a district system. On that very same day, this is the city council that we elected. Not only is that six white people, Cecil Bothwell, uh, Esther Mannheimer and Mark Hunt all lived in one precinct. Gwen uh, uh, Whistler lived right down the street. Four representatives from what is now District 2. The new districts will never guarantee anybody a specific chance of winning an election. Your chances are much improved as an African American in this, but they are not guaranteed. But this is guaranteed never to happen again. And what is guaranteed is we will have representation from all over the city. That is guaranteed. And that is why the North Carolina General Assembly had a reason to do this to us. They didn't just do this for no reason. They have a reason to do this. And so what do we have? Well, everybody's trying to sit here and go, what if we do this? What if we do that? Can we do a charter this way? Can we do a charter that way? This is the state of relationship between North Carolina, a General Assembly, and Asheville. I don't care which uh, character you choose to uh, be in this <laughs> scenario. <coughs> But as it typically turns out, Jerry gets the upper hand. Now, most of the time in this great American classic, this is what's going on. It's a tit-for-tat battle. There is no checkmate for Asheville when it comes to this. You can do whatever you want, and the North Carolina General Assembly will be able to come undo what you just did. How long do you want to play this game? Every once in a while, Tom and Jerry get along, and I think that that is what we need to do now. Because this is our next senator who is going to be filling the spot of Terry Van Dyne. And we need to have a good relationship with uh, the North Carolina General Assembly, whether you guys like it or not. So I would implore you to uh, move on with what the North Carolina uh, legislature has already told us to do, with the exception of bringing us a primary, because that's crazy. And otherwise, this is what the uh, Senate cafeteria is going to look like. <laughs> now, I am an expert in equity and inclusion because I am the father of twins, and I can assure you uh, 
you know, uh, solving these battles all the time is uh, pretty epic. One night, a few nights ago, Finney, over there on the right, came running in the uh, living room and said, Dad, Dad, uh, can I sleep in the top bunk tonight? And I heard Avery coming up uh, right behind him really quickly. And I said, wait a second, son. Did you just uh, petition a favor for me without having a full conversation of all of the parties involved just so that you could get me to say yes so that when uh, Avery came in here, uh, you know, I would already be on board, and he said yes, and I said, what did you do wrong? And he said, well, that's how uh, I, I did the same thing that the Asheville City Council uh, did when <laughs> they held yes. the thing. It's we got time. It. It, is okay. time. it is time for you guys to do right. what you're Thank supposed you. to do. Okay.